Unit Four, Great Ideas, Track Thirty Seven. Great ideas are generated in different ways. Sometimes an idea may simply be when a company takes advantage of an opportunity to extend its product range, to offer more choice to existing customers, or a great idea could allow a company to enter a market which was closed to it before. Companies which are prepared to spend a lot on R and D may make a breakthrough by having an original idea for a product which others later copy. For example, Sony and the Walkman. On the other hand, some products are developed in response to customer research. They come from customer ideas. These products are made to meet a need, to satisfy consumer demand. Or the product does something similar to another product, but faster, so it saves time. Some people will buy new products because the product raises their status, gives them a new, more upmarket image. Unit Four, Great Ideas, Track Thirty Eight. Other people will buy any green product which reduces waste or protects the environment, even if it is more expensive. If an idea is really good and the product fills a gap in the market, it may even win an award for innovation. Unit Four, Great Ideas, Track Thirty Nine. In your opinion, what were the best business ideas of the last fifteen years? I thought about this for quite a long time, and in my opinion, it's a service and two products. The first is eBay, and this works for me because it provides individuals and small businesses with a channel to market that didn't exist before. Started in the dot-com boom, and has been extremely successful, with a turnover in two thousand and nine of two point four billion dollars. It's not a new idea, though. Running an auction is almost as old as society. It's based on a model of traditional auctions. It's just transferred the model and the thinking to a different environment. My second is the product, and it's a USB stick for computers or plug-and-play devices. This enabled data and pictures to be easily transportable, and satisfied a demand for easy portability from computer to computer. The amount of data that can be transported now is enormous, and it had the huge benefit. Of meaning that you didn't have to take your portable computer with you everywhere, so it satisfied a basic customer need. The technology itself also enabled a lot of other devices. The final one is the digital camera. I'm not sure it's, if it's strictly an invention of the last 15 years, or if it's just become a mass market item. But it's revolutionised photography. And it's now incorporated into many other devices as a free gift, like mobile phones or PCs. And again, it satisfied a customer demand to share pictures and images quickly and easily. Unit Four, Great Ideas, Track Forty. Do companies spend enough time on research and development? I think this depends very much on the industry. There are some product-based companies, like pharmaceuticals and high-tech companies, that spend an enormous amount of time and money on research and development. Nearly twenty-five percent of the costs of sale, for example, at Ericsson, the Finnish mobile phone company. Are on research and development. I strongly believe that most companies can benefit from using information and relationships within their own company to actually develop new products and services. 
My definition of innovation is to look at what everybody else sees and see something different. So that might mean looking at what you already do and looking at where you can do it slightly differently to increase your product range or extending your products into new markets. This can save time and money. Unit 4. Great Ideas. Track 41. Okay, everyone, let's begin, shall we? Our main purpose is to decide the date of the launch for our new product, DM2000. After that, we've got to decide the recommended retail price for the phone and talk about our marketing plans, okay? May, what's your opinion? Should we launch in June or September? Personally, I'm in favor of June. Let's get into the market early and surprise our competitors. It could give us a big advantage. It might even force them to bring out their new phones earlier. I mean, before they're really ready to do so. Thanks, May. What do the rest of you think? Chang, how do you feel about this? Well, um, I'm not sure about June, really. Mm, I think it's too early. In fact, far too early. We need more time to plan our marketing. You know, a lot of people, potential buyers, will be away on holiday in June. It's not the best time to have a launch. We need to start with a real bang. Hmm, thanks, Cheng. Wan, what's your view? I believe you'd prefer a later date for the launch, is that correct? Yeah, June's too early. I think September's the best time. We can promote the smartphone strongly then with a multimedia campaign. Mm. The last three months of the year have always been the peak period for selling new electronic products. That's when we need to put the phone on the market. Mm. I agree. I think there are good reasons for choosing September. What about the recommended retail price for the phone? Any thoughts on that? Hold on a minute. I thought we were talking about the launch date not the price. Okay, May, maybe we are moving a little too fast. Let's get back to the point. I get the feeling that most of us seem to prefer September, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm, maybe. Okay, we're agreed. The launch is in September. Now, what about the price? Wan, I asked you to bring us ideas about this. I know we've set a price, but we should think again. I think it should be about 900 Hong Kong dollars. Uh, and your reasons? Well, simply, our main competitor brought out a smartphone recently. Mm -hmm. It retails at just over 1,000 Hong Kong dollars. If we sell at 900, we'll be undercutting them by 10%. So, we'll have a big price advantage at the start of our launch. Good. We need to be sharp on pricing. Now, what sales outlets do you think we should target, Wan? No problem there. We could start with the specialist mobile phone stores and big department stores. After that, we could look at other distribution channels. You know, stations, airports, that sort of thing. Right. Sounds okay to me. Everyone happy with Wan's suggestions? Yeah. yeah. Great. Great. Good. Unit 4. Great Ideas. Track 41. Okay, everyone, let's begin, shall we? Our main purpose is to decide the date of the launch for our new product, DM2000. After that, we've got to decide the recommended retail price for the phone and talk about our marketing plans, okay? May, what's your opinion? Should we launch in June or September? Personally, I'm in favor of June. Let's get into the market early and surprise our competitors. It could give us a big advantage. It might even force them to bring out their new phones earlier. I mean, before they're really ready to do so. Thanks, May. What do the rest of you think? Chang, how do you feel about this? Well, um, I'm not sure about June, really. Mm, I think it's too early. In fact, 
far too early. We need more time to plan our marketing. You know, a lot of people, potential buyers, will be away on holiday in June. It's not the best time to have a launch. We need to start with a real bang. Hmm. Thanks, Cheng. Wan, what's your view? I believe you'd prefer a later date for the launch. Is that correct? Yeah, June's too early. I think September's the best time. We can promote the smartphone strongly then with a multimedia campaign.、Mm. The last three months of the year have always been the peak period for selling new electronic products. That's when we need to put the phone on the market.、Mm. I agree. I think there are good reasons for choosing September. What about the recommended retail price for the phone? Any thoughts on that? Hold on a minute. I thought we were talking about the launch date, not the price. Okay, May. Maybe we are moving a little too fast. Let's get back to the point. I get the feeling that most of us seem to prefer September. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe. Okay, we're agreed. The launch is in September. Now, what about the price? When I asked you to bring us ideas about this, I know we've set a price, but we should think again. I think it should be about nine hundred Hong Kong dollars.、Uh, and your reasons? Well, simply, our main competitor brought out a smartphone recently.、Mm-hmm. It retails at just over one thousand Hong Kong dollars. If we sell at nine hundred. We'll be undercutting them by ten percent, so we'll have a big price advantage at the start of our launch. Good. We need to be sharp on pricing. Now, what sales outlets do you think we should target, Wan? No problem there. We could start with the specialist mobile phone stores and big department stores. After that, we could look at other distribution channels. You know, stations, airports, that sort of thing. Right. Sounds okay to me. Everyone happy with one suggestions? Yeah. yeah great. Great. Unit four. Great ideas. Track forty-two. You know, Jane, I'm really looking forward to choosing the winner of this competition. It seems to be creating enormous interest all over the world. Yes, a lot of people have asked for application forms. What are you looking for? I mean, how will you judge the projects? There are three things that are really important. They'll help me to make up my mind. The winner will have to come up with a great idea for an attraction. It'll have to be something different, a bit unusual. But linked in some way to the culture of the community or country, it could be anything, as long as it's exciting—a museum, an art gallery, a theme park, or a research study center. The possibilities are endless. I want people to use their imagination. That's the idea of the competition. I see. What else will be important? Well, the new attraction must provide an enjoyable experience for visitors. They should really enjoy the visit and talk about it with their friends afterwards. Can you give an example? Well, I was very impressed with the Kennedy Museum in Boston. There was a replica of the Oval Office when John F. Kennedy was president. There are a lot of interesting exhibits, including the rocking chair he used to sit in. Sounds fascinating. I'll visit it if I ever get to that part of the world. One other thing that's important, Jane. I want the new attraction to make money. It must be self-financing. If it makes money, it can contribute financially to other facilities that the community needs. It shouldn't have to receive local government funds once it's been set up. The winner will have to come up with lots of ideas on how it can make money. I want it to be a commercial proposition. Jeremy Keeley is an expert facilitator and specialist in change leadership. He works with people in over sixty different organisations, in the commercial, professional, public, education, and charity sectors. 
Jeremy, what do you think are the most important features of a new attraction? A new attraction needs somebody like Mr. Singh who is committed to making it happen and who comes up with great ideas like this one. It needs to be able to attract large numbers of people because over time it needs to be able to make money so that it can pay for this for the big investment that it takes to create it in the first place people need to be able to get to it easily so it needs to be uh, available to local motorways and, and road networks and uh, public transport systems and then when they're in it people need to be able to get around it easily and it needs to be exciting and different. Why do some attractions fail? Some attractions simply aren't interesting or exciting enough. And people stop going. They probably cost too much to build in the first place. And therefore they don't attract enough people to pay for the cost. Some attractions don't have people who are committed to them in the same way that Mr. Singh is committed to them. And some attractions simply are not easy enough to get to. What's the best attraction you visited? I have three children and I love museums that uh, interact with children, that give children an opportunity to do lots of activities and have fun and learn at the same time. So my favourite examples of that are the Natural History Museum in London and the Victoria Museum near Vancouver in Canada. And my children loved it when they went there. I also like attractions that take advantage of the beauty of the local area. So again, one of my favourites is Table Mountain, near Cape Town in South Africa. 